I uh, mentioned in the previous segment that this gold color was really, really uh, a great color for Wahoo. The problem is I can't buy this gold color. The yellows tend to look like this. So what I was faced with is either not not doing this kind of color or trying to experiment with custom colors. So here is the uh, recipe I use to make my custom dark yellow. And I found this ratio on the internet. And it, uh, you start off with a base of medium yellow, which is this guy. And I'll give you details on the screen here in just a few minutes. And then you add a drop of red, three drops of green, four drops of blue, and one drop of black. Now you gotta be careful with this black. You can, uh, you can see with this sample, it, it starts out quite light and then it gets darker. So what I do is I will paint this probably without the black at first. Black is a very dominant color and uh, one, one drop of black goes a long ways. And then after I have this side looking about right, I'll put in the one drop of black and then I'll finish it off here all the way up to the top of the back until the, uh, the black, jet black back is, is installed. So let's, uh, let's try this. So what I generally do is uh, after many years of working on these lures, I have a pretty good idea of the volume that I need. Bear in mind, once you've made a custom color, uh, unless you have a container for your custom color, you probably are going to have to throw it out. I'm going to add roughly the volume that I think I'm going to need. Bear in mind, we still have to use reducer on this. And the lure is not big. So I think that's probably lots. So now the formula says one drop of red. I haven't put the black in yet. And right off the bat you say, oh my goodness, what a, a colorful mess. But you know what? Just keep stirring. And one of the problems with custom colors, when you have the bright silver background, what you see is not necessarily what you get because the um, the mirror finish or even the, uh, the aluminum will lighten the color. Now you can see that this is quite a bit darker. So I'm going to um, put some reducer in this and uh, then we're going to spray. I'm using uh, the proper 4011 reducer for the Createx paints, and I mix it roughly 30 to 50 percent. Now, I don't know exactly the ratio because what I do is I'll put some reducer in and mix it up. Then I'll test it on the side. Now, I can't turn this cup for you to see it, but once you hit a point, you put the brush on the side, and if it runs down, you know that your paint is probably a pretty good thickness. So I can tell by the color right now that this is not going to be dark enough. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my one drop of black in now. And then when I paint that upper part, I may put in a second drop. And you're going to see how this one little drop of black here really darkens this. Even as dark as this is, when it comes out onto the lure, 
it won't be near as dark. It'll be, um, if I had to guess, 50% lighter. So again, I test on the side. Okay, doesn't quite want to run. A little bit more. Okay, that's the perfect thickness for the uh, lower part of the lure. So the method of application is identical to what I showed previously. Um, so I'm just going to uh, start spraying this and I'll come back and show you uh, the results after the, uh, the lighter version the darker version and then the black back. We're getting ready to uh, put a layer of epoxy. This is uh, the first coat. I use something called art resin. Uh, you have to be careful with the mixing instructions. The stuff likes to be mixed exactly 50-50. Um, I've never had a problem with it, but uh, I've seen others who um, have had lures that don't fully harden and they get kind of a little bit tacky. So anyway, I mixed it uh, and I'm going to start applying it. And you start from the top down. You generally give the eyes quite a bit of liquid. The liquid is quite thick. There will be the occasional bubble that you'll come across. And you can actually use a hot air gun to get rid of them which is probably the safest. I have used a propane torch, but if you're not careful, you will get uh, fish eyes. Now the fish eyes go away after the second and third coat, but one of the biggest purposes of this coat, of this first coat, is to protect what you've done so far and then it will also allow you to put on things like gills, uh, side fins, and um, stripes as well if you're going to do stripes. So it's, it's, it's great if this um, first coat works out perfect. So you don't always too much is not good, not enough is not good. So. Other than saying it's just right, is what works the best. That's the best advice I can give you. So we're getting ready to uh, put some uh, gills on these two um, floaters. And um, they've had a, a coat of um, epoxy. So I wasn't quite sure if I was going to cut those gill, the, the gills out, but now that it's had the coat of epoxy, I'm, I'm kind of thinking I'm going to uh, use some tape and tape these gills off and then uh, paint inside there with uh, some nice bright red paint. So why don't I do that? So I've got this nice thin uh, tape. And I'm going to cut a little piece off. Bear in mind, I'm using an oil-based paint, so it covers very, very well. It sticks very well, but it's going to take, going to have to dry overnight. You got to use your light to get this right, because I've marked, I marked the gills before, if you remember. It's kind of scribed them into the uh, soft aluminum tape and you just kind of work the tape down and around 
and if it doesn't go quite around the band, you bring it back and the tape you can encourage to follow the curves. It's a little bit of work. I am pretty sure you can't see this on the, on the camera, but I'm, I'm actually fitting it directly where the, uh, the scribe mark was. Now one of the things I do, just before I paint I'll do this again, is I use the, uh, the uh, tip of the uh, scissors handle and I work it down because it's, uh, the tape is adhering to the uh, epoxy which it should make a very, very good seal. All you have to do is make sure that you press the tape down firmly. Okay, so that's kind of one side. I cut another little piece off. And again, I'll start. got to use that light because it's very very hard to see no matter how much amount of light that you have and these are fairly small gills so makes it even perhaps a little bit tougher Well, that looks pretty good. Still got to rub these down though. I see the tape has crept back a little bit, so I'm going to have to maybe just move it over a tiny little bit. I think you get the general idea there. Now in past, I've actually carved gills. That's a that's that's kind of fun, but it's it does take a lot of work. And now you can kind of see where the gill is. So we're gonna take a very fine brush. We've got some oil-based paint. It's um, fire engine red. And one, one thing you want to make sure you don't do is you don't want to just kind of slop the paint in there and, and put way, way, way too much because that gives an opportunity for the paint to uh, get underneath the tape. So you kind of spread it on. Generous, but not too generous. straight up and look at that beautiful little gill. So we're gonna put this one aside and we're gonna do the other one. So I wanted to show you how to make these side fins. Now the idea of a side fin on any fish is it has um, deeper colored little stripes, little veins in it, with less dense material between them. So this is, this is what it kind of should look like after we're done. So how I did that was I made a fin out of light cardboard, kind of tried it on there, made sure it was what I wanted. 
but at the same time I also made uh, a second piece of cardboard that, that has the same curvature and you'll see how that affects in just a second here. So I'm just going to prop this up a little bit so it's easier for the camera to see. I'm going to check this fin to see where it, where it is roughly. And of course the idea is to make the two the same. Okay, that's lined up. It's important to uh, have a tight fit for the cardboard against the lure. Okay. Now, I'm going to have to do this kind of upside down to the camera because I, I don't know how else to do it, to be very honest. It, it's kind of a tricky procedure. So, I've loaded up uh, some, some, some black paint in my Infinity and I've turned the, the, the pressure way down and my first task is to put a little stripe right along the top of the fin. That's going to help define the fin. So here we go. I'm going to line this up very carefully. Got to have a steady hand. dark enough to stop. So now the, the next vein that we're going to put in, we're going to move the uh, paper down a little bit and we're going to try and shoot kind of this way against that edge. And uh, if, we're, if we've done this right, we'll get a black stripe and a little bit of overspray will make it look um, like like the the material between the veins. Well, you can see that. Okay, now we do another one. It's important to make sure that your airbrush has not got any tip drying on it because that can change how you do stuff. Okay, there's the second one. Third one. Now I'm also going to put a little bit uh, more black at the uh, the base of the fin. Uh, there's generally on a fish there's a fair bit of muscle and uh, it tends to be a little darker there. So let's see how we did. Not too too bad. So maybe a little bit darker than I would have liked, but uh, uh, here, here are the two sides. So in my previous video, I showed how to spray on the, the side fins. Um, the, the side fins, I always use black because it's a, it covers very well. But for Wahoo, more shine is better. So uh, on this example of one of the stick baits, I have actually used a um, uh, side fin made out of the uh, aluminum tape. And how I do that is I have a number of fin designs that I have uh, made over the years. And I go into my little bag and I pick one that looks about right. So based on this lure's size, I chose this one, but not all of this one. So what I do is 
I trace the, the full one, the full fin. Of course, you have to have both sides because you've got one for the left side, one for the right side. And then I cut them, cut them out with a very, very fine pair of scissors. And then what I do is I decide how, how much of this fin I'm going to use. So for example, I used about this much for this lure here. I, I cut one out, I cut it off the way I want it, and then I trace that new cut onto this one. And um, then I stick it on. It's a very easy fin, but the, the reason that I like it is it's, it's very, very shiny. And of course, uh, attracted by shine and speed and color. And anytime you can get more shine on a hook, that's something that you, you, you want to take advantage of. Now, however, I want to talk about one of the other uh, additions that I put on a lot of my Wahoo hooks. Not so much my tuna hooks. Tuna tend to like bait that looks like bait. They're not big for you know, wild colors and shine and all of that. So here's an example of, of, of two of my previous stick baits that I've made. And um, these, uh, these two lures feature stripes on the side, but they're more than stripes. So the stripes are put on using a, a trimp plaid. Could be gloss white, could be satin white. It doesn't matter because once you put the uh, high gloss uh, coating of epoxy on it, it, it will be high gloss. So that, that's what I use. And I'll, I'll be going through that in just a second. But uh, these are actually glow in the dark. And one of the things that many fishermen and many people don't understand is that um, fish have a greater perception of light than humans. And glow in the dark stripes are very common on commercial lures. And I looked for a while on how to, how to get a good glow in the dark uh, treatment for my lures. And the best I found was this stuff. This is a, an Elmer's glow in the dark glue. And this is a kid's glue and it's water-based. So what I do is after I put these stripes on, I, uh, I use a very small brush and I, I add not one but two layers of glow in the dark. And wow, I'll tell you, after that second layer has dried, you, you take it in a dark room, they just glow. Of course, you have to charge it up with light first. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So we'll put these aside for the moment. Okay, so we're going to put stripes on this, this fellow here. So I've got uh, some, some trim clad paint here. I'm gonna, I've already shaken it up. I'm going to open it up. Now there's a bit of a trick to putting on these stripes. Uh, I, this very, very fine brush, you, you don't want to bend the bristles. Because once you bend the bristles, you've kind of lost control of your tip. What you want to do is you want to load up the brush with paint, and not a lot of paint, and then you bring down the very tip to your starting point. Now I like to I like to go from the middle and I go up and I go down. When you touch it, it'll it'll kind of jump onto the paint body, and then you control where that drip goes. And what you're really doing is draining your brush, and you might have to come back two or three times to finish the stripe. But you never, you know, paint like you're painting a, a wall on a house, go back and forth and back and forth. That, you, you, that will not give you the results. You want very uh, consistent widths. You want very consistent opaqueness. And a, as you're going down the stripe, you might find that there's not enough paint in there. Well, you go back and get some more paint. So this, this, this lure here has the, um, uh, side fin quite low and that's going to allow stripes along here. So let's do a couple stripes and uh, show you how it's done. You take a little bit of paint, just a little bit. And you touch the lure. Now that's uh, not enough paint because the brush was totally dry, so I'm gonna I can go over things. Pause for a steady hand. Okay, there's your first stripe. 
Now, one thing I do have is I have a little guide here that I made out of cardboard. And that, uh, that helps me uh, with the width between the stripes. I like to be a little bit consistent. So I mark, I mark the second stripe. And I also keep another lure handy so I can kind of see what's happening. Now, you'll notice that these stripes on this lure are wider. These are going to be thinner because I'm using a thinner brush. It's, it's your choice. You can do whatever you like. So here's what the stripes look like. Gonna let that dry for 24 hours. We'll put the stripes on the other side. And then we'll put the uh, glow in the dark. I'll, uh, I gave some shots of the uh, glow in the dark and a dark rim. The, the, they really, really, really do well. They're, they really do very well. They glow crazy.